as an example. Anyway, so you send it to review. That's one, one of the options after a desk review. Or you can accept the submission without sending it to review. So you accept and you skip review. Now, this feature is there because uh, you agree with me that there are some submissions, and I gave examples like obituaries, okay? Or um, uh, editorial, editorial comments. So you invite a renowned academic who's been you know, in the field of nursing for many, many years to write an editorial for that particular issue. Um, if you have a submission as an editorial, you don't need to you know, send it for review, right? It's coming from an eminent person. Okay, and usually an editorial is, uh, is just a few pages, really, right? Uh, so you'd want to accept and you skip review for that one. Or you can decline submission. So if Lighton submits a computer science paper to this journal, which is exclusively on nursing, and that computer science paper has nothing to do with nursing, you decline the submission, okay? Now, we are going to look at the case where you you send the submission for review because review is the second stage in the workflow, okay? Um, and maybe I see there are a number of articles that have been added here. Maybe we'll use this one as an example. So it comes through, it's not, it's, it hasn't yet been assigned. Uh, I'll view the submission and then I will say, you know, the, um, uh, you notice that the buttons will pop up once you assign an editor here. So I'll assign Lighton as an as an editor. Um, there's myself here. Um, I won't really send send a message here. I'm just submit it here. So I'll I'll see these buttons here, and then I'll say send it to review. Okay. Now when you send it to review, the pop up that comes up enables you to specify if which file you want to send for review. In some instances, now this is important because in some instances. So the first option is you'd want to send the same original file that was sent by authors for reviews. So you just tick here. But uh, let's say, you know, you are pressed with time and the author or the authors forget to do some trivial thing. Like, for instance, they forget to make it blind, right, to remove their personal identifying information. Uh, I don't know what your plan is on whether this John is going to be you know, double, bl double blind, or if it's single blind, or if it's open reviews, you know, uh, but I'm assuming it's double blind. If it's double blinded, then the expectation is that the manuscript, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you this manuscript. If I open this manuscript, if it's double blind, you don't want this. This is a problem here, right? If it's double blind, you wouldn't want the authors to submit their personal identifying information. So these things must be anonymized. Either you remove this section with affiliations and the names, or you replace them with placeholder, like we say, author one, author two, and all those things. Okay? So if, if it's double blind and an author submits something like this, you can edit it on your end, right? Internally, right? Right? You just say author details anonymized or something. Okay? So you, you, you'd, you'd save this. I'm going to say save this as... Uh, um, I'll, I'll just call this anonymized. So you'd be, in essence, I'm showcasing what you, a, a, a situation where you would want to upload another file, a file that you want to send for review. You've edited a slight edit on behalf of the authors. Okay. Um, so in this case, I just choose that, you know, um, uh, yeah, I can just choose that this is a revision or something. Or I can choose that this is not a revision of an existing file. Uh, or it could be a revision. So it's article text, and then I'll say upload. I'll navigate to the downloads folder because this is where I've added this anonymized file. And then I would upload it. Okay? So in the case where I upload a completely new file that is different, um, seeing as the new file is what I want to send to the reviewers, I would untick the one with the author identifying information and tick this and then say, send to review, okay? So that once I click send to review, I'll automatically move to the second stage. Remember I was on submission, now we're on review. Hope we are following. Now, when you're on the review stage, there are a couple of things that happen, right? 
the very first thing you want to do is specify the review round. Typically, uh, the review process can, you know, can, can take quite a bit of time. Remember, a, and again, I don't know what your, your editorial team has decided in terms of the number of reviewers. Typically, it's an odd number of reviewers, right? So it could be three, five, seven, nine, but, but of course, I mean, the question is where are you going to find these people, right? This is, uh, the review process is a, it's a thankless task, is it? People do it for free. Uh, so usually, <laughs> the norm is three, okay? So if you choose three reviewers, you agree with me that there are certain instances where maybe two of the reviewers will say, oh, this is an accept, and then there's this one reviewer who will say, no, this is a decline, there's nothing novel, there's nothing new about what these authors have done, we shouldn't even... Uh, entertain the thought of um, of accepting this for publication. Okay, so you, you may decide to say, we are going to have a second round of reviews. This is why you have rounds here. So by default, you have at least one round, right? Each review round is associated with a couple of things here. There are reviewers and there are revisions that are being made to the files. There are reviewer discussions. So in essence, when when you are busy with uh, when you are busy with activities associated with the review stage, <clears throat> the range of activities that you perform include <clears throat> defining a review round, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, assigning reviewers the people that are going to look or evaluate the submission, uh, uploading different versions of files, the revisions of the files, and then you have review discussions or review discussions. So typically these reviews would be done amongst the journal editor or the section editor and the reviewers, not the author, because at this stage, and again, I, 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 depending, on the <laughs> depending on what you've decided as a team here, uh, by the way, I'd, I'd love to hear comments on whether you're using a single blind you know, review process, whether it's open review or if it's double bl blind. Are we using um, single, double or open? Um, or maybe this is working. I hope you can hear me still. Or maybe this is still working progress. No, we 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 can hear you. Okay. So so, so we yeah. can hear you, sir. Yeah, yeah. So 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 the, the the maybe I'm using the technical terms associated with this. But for for a single for single blind, typically what this means is that the people that have in this particular case, the authors. Okay, Agnes, Margaret, and Maureen we will not know who the three reviewers are. They have no idea who they are. But each of the three reviewers will know to say this paper was submitted by Agnes, Margaret, and Maureen, and they're from these institutions. That's single blind. Double blind means <clears throat> Agnes, Margaret, and Maureen will not know who is, re will not know who is reviewing the paper. Also, the three reviewers that you've chosen right, will not know who the authors of the paper are. With an open review process, this is becoming, I, I won't say common, but there are a number of journals that are gravitating towards that now. Everybody, everybody knows what's happening. So the authors know who is reviewing and, you know, the, re the reviewers know who wrote the paper. Now, I'm, I'm old school myself. I prefer double blind because I understand as a human being, I know that inherently we are biased, right? You may try as much as possible to be objective, you're biased. The moment you see, here's light on reviewing a paper by Emmanuel, when I see Emmanuel or Patricia, I'll be like, I, I won't be objective in my assessment, right? Uh, maybe I'll take or oh, accept uh, or weak accept because I know the people or the co-authors of the paper. But if I don't know who they are, uh, and this is me as an individual and from, from my experience, you know, being in academia, not, not for a very long time, you know, since 2011 here. I know that this process can be biased somehow. 
But ultimately, you're going to have to make a decision. What I'm assuming in this walkthrough is that the authors don't know who is reviewing the paper. The reviewers don't know who submitted the paper. Okay? So, the next step you do is once you create a, a, a round, the review round is you, you need to invite reviewers. Okay? Now, uh, the idea of, uh, and, and I, I don't, uh, uh, by the way, uh, were these added by ourselves? Yes, we added we added them by ourselves. Yes, right. So you uh, the next stage is you add reviewers. Okay, now this notion of adding reviewers, right, is the reason why, if you remember, at the submission stage here, there's someone, once you, you receive the submission, there's someone who has to assign to say the 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 member of the editorial team who is going to oversee this paper is Lighton or Emmanuel or Patricia or something. Because when you assign somebody, that somebody ideally will maybe be an expert in a particular field of subfield of nursing. So that they would know to say, out of the pool of reviewers, I think that uh, we should assign uh, Emmanuel as, 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 as a reviewer. Okay? And then at this stage, you notice here, you, you specify again. Is it double blind, open, or, or, or just single blind? Um, and I'll just say add review. And you notice there's a default email huh, that is created. The email has, uh, you know, it's, it's a generic message, but the generic message is, is good enough. In this case, you notice, I believe that you'd serve as an excellent reviewer, blah, 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 right, for the article. And then you submit this. But before you submit, you notice that there are default configurations that have been made to do with important dates. For instance, you specify by when you want these people to send um, a response on whether they are okay with reviewing the article. You know you know how you are inviting somebody to be a reviewer. You don't know if they are too busy to review or if they will manage to review. So you give them a period. So in this case, the default is, if you notice, from the 22nd to the... Um, from the 22nd to the... Uh huh. To the twelfth of September. Twenty second to the twelfth. There's one, two. So it's about three weeks. You're giving them three weeks. You can cut this short because it's just a response. You can say we are giving you until we are giving you a week to decide. Yeah. If today is the twenty second, we're saying. We're giving you until the, the 29th to, to give us a response. It's just a response, really. Say, I accept or I don't. And then you also specify by when you want this review. Typically, default is like a month or something. And then you say, add the reviewer. When you add that reviewer, the details will be under the reviewer section. So you notice here, there's a man I'm saying. Now, remember, depending on what your uh, editorial team decides, uh, usually the standard is three reviewers, an odd number, right? It's like, uh, uh, is it, I don't know if it's High Court judges or Supreme Court judges or something, right? You need an odd number of people to decide here. So that in case there's a tie, you say the majority wins. Again, you have to decide, okay? And then I would say, well, the other reviewer I want to add is maybe Cosmas Moon. In fact, what I'll do here is I'll say, uh, I'll use another case here. When you are, When you're adding a reviewer, right? There are three options. The first option is you can add a reviewer from your reviewer database. So if you've populated your database, like in this case, you have six potential reviewers in your database. You can choose from your reviewer database. And the beauty about having a database is that you would specify the research interests as well. Okay? And you want to make sure you are, you are, you are on point here, right? Because... Uh, part of what you can do when you're searching for reviewers, as, as you might imagine, this reviewer database will grow, right, in size. It will grow in size. You may have maybe 100 potential reviewers. Uh, so instead of scrolling and checking which reviewer is it, you can search by, you know, by interest, for instance. Say, I'm looking for people that are sp uh, specialists in, uh, in public health. They are public health nurses or something. Okay. Okay. Um, or people that are uh, specialized in, I don't know if it's midwifery or something, 
you know. Um, so as you are populating the, the, the database, just remember that uh, you will need to also add, this is an important field here, reviewing interest, okay? But the option I used was we selected from an existing database, but there could be instances where your pool, like right now we have five people. Maybe none of these five people are experts in the, the topic, right? Which we are looking at here. Remember the article name is uh, Premature Removal of, I don't know, JDL Implant Among Women of Childbearing Age in Dollar, District Zambia. So maybe none of these reviewers are experts, right? You know as a journal editor, say, none of these can review this work, right? So what do you do? You say add reviewer, and then you can choose the option where you say create new reviewer, okay? You say create new reviewer. Creating a new reviewer allows you to specify important things like, um, I'll just say add reviewer. When you say add reviewer, you notice here, it's asking you, provide the name of this new reviewer because you, what you're doing here is you're adding somebody who has, has not been explicitly added as a potential reviewer. At the same time, this person may not be in the system itself. So, you know, you, you can add their details here, their name, their last name, and then their username, you create a username, their email, and you specify their reviewer interest and their affiliation. And then you add the reviewer. Now, in as much as this is not cast in stone, but it's always good for you to, first of all, informally, you just send an email. We would like to, we were thinking of inviting you as a reviewer, assuming this person is not in your database. Are you okay with us adding you as a reviewer? When they say yes, then you add their details here, their name, you add a username, email. So what you'd be doing here actually is you're creating this person as a user in the in the journal platform itself. Okay? So that's the other option. The other option is where you could say enroll an existing user. Now you, you might be wondering what's the difference between creating a new user and enrolling a user. Well, enrolling a user means you enrolling a reviewer means you want to select or to invite a reviewer from a pool of existing users. These existing users may be authors or people with another role. Typically, it's authors. And you agree with me that usually in your journal, right, as you're publishing issues, you have certain prolific uh, authors, right? Maybe they submitted an article in, in issue one of 2024 and in issue four. Next year, because they are consistent like that, and you think their work is, is really quality work, you can then say, we'll enroll an existing author or something. Okay? So you go through the same process as creating a new reviewer. You specify these details, the date when they should respond, the review date, um, and then you specify double blind, blind, or open, depending on what you decide as a journal. All right? And then you'd say, uh, add a reviewer. You notice by default, it sends an email. You can choose not to email somebody, but usually you want to email. And they say, add the reviewer. But in this case, um, unfortunately, we don't have, uh, I could say, uh, I'll, 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 I'll search for, I'll search for, yeah, there we go. And then I'll say, you know, add review or something. Right? So I've added somebody who was not listed, uh, right? Uh, prof was not on the list of, of those six reviewers, if you notice, because she's been assigned a different role. She hasn't been assigned as a potential reviewer. If you feel that the pe people on your editorial team needs to, be, needs to be assigned as reviewers, what you will need to do is you need to assign them the reviewer role. By default, they don't have that role, which is why I had to look up uh, prof as an example here. Okay? Um, uh, then we can add another reviewer maybe from the existing pool now um, or maybe we can check uh, other people that uh, that, that uh, are here and then we'll, we'll, we'll say add in run existing user here and then I'll just search for um, Keston 
we didn't we didn't create a username for Keston. Is it because of maybe of the the law? Maybe we try Brenda. Okay, uh, it's fine. I've I've I've, I've added a conceptor. Uh, okay. As an example, we can we can fix these things later on, where all members of the tutorial team are added with all the roles, so that they can be reviewers. You see, uh, I don't know about your field, but uh, uh, I've been involved with you know conferences and and journals, and finding reviewers is a problem. Uh, it's a huge problem. You have no idea how much of a problem it is, but maybe the the next thing you know discipline or field is um, is so. I think if you look historically, it's been around for many, many years, so it won't be difficult for you to find reviewers, but in my case, in my field, it's very difficult. Okay, so what we do is, if you're a member of the editorial team, by default, you're a potential reviewer. Okay, unless if there's a conflict of interest, you will be invited to review work. So, you add the reviewers. Now, what you'll notice when you add the reviewers here is, there's a message here that says, request sent, request sent, request sent. Um, I, 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 I was hoping that maybe if, if, uh, if the three of you are logged onto the system, one of you could at least try and accept the request. So you log onto the system and then just, uh, check on your, on your dashboard. You'll notice that there's, uh, uh there's under task here. You will find that there's a task for you or you can, uh, you should be able to see something that will, will prompt you to accept to be a review or something. Um, so you add the reviewers. Um, there, there are a couple of things that will happen once the date elapses here, the due date. You will you will get a message overdue. Okay, review overdue or something. You know, uh, something else you can do after you add the reviewer is assuming that this person doesn't respond by the 29th of August, for instance, you can contact them. The system has a provision where you you can say you know you can unassign for instance if it's overdue and somebody has not responded you unassign so that you assign somebody else as a reviewer or you can email them say but uh, you have not responded about uh xxx review um we have not we have not heard from you regarding uh you being assigned a potential review or something or some something like that can you please confirm if you need more time to decide or something and then you send the email or something right so there's a couple of things you can do right as you you're interacting with the reviewers and remember time is important here it could be that this is august and you want to publish in a couple of weeks right so if somebody is not responding you want to follow up or you unassign them and you assign somebody else. Uh, it's very important that you understand this process because this is where most of the work begins. If people don't review the article, I don't think you you find yourself publishing that article, right? You at least need feedback from all the reviewers. Okay? You can also see a history of the interaction that has happened with this reviewer. So you see here that they were assigned a reviewer today They've been notified. I've sent them an email today. So all the communication that is taking place is kept as a log here in the system. Uh, quite interesting, actually. Quite helpful, in my opinion, actually. Okay? And then, you see, once uh, people have been assigned as a reviewer, maybe I can assign myself as well as a reviewer here, as an example. I hope this will work. So say, in row, and then... Um, Somewhere at the top here, I'll search for lighting. And I hope this is me. Mm. I hope this is me. <clears throat> I have a number of... Uh, <laughs> Let me see. If, I, hope, I hope that would be my... Um, Or maybe it's a different. Um, I was trying to check to see if this is a. I have a number of accounts here. Um, because. Um, 
this is a bad uh it would have worked if if maybe one of you would have because i'd have to log in and log in as a different um user or something i have no idea which light on this is okay what i'm going to do is i'm going to add all of these different <laughs> different accounts really um i'll enroll yeah i have quite a number of uh yeah uh quite a number of uh, accounts here i'll add more Uh, let's just add all of these called Python and then and then I'll, I'll try and see if I can mimic that user just now um, or probably just log in or something to showcase what what the reviewer sees right um, so that you, un you understand here again you'd have to decide on who exactly would be doing all of this if in this case maybe it's a person you've assigned as a journal editor or something Right? or the section editor um, but ultimately I mean the, the decision is the onus is on you as an editorial team okay I've added all of these now what I'm going to do to mimic this is uh, I'll try and see if I can uh, ooh, let us see here I'll try and see if I can uh, if I can uh, Login from here, I suppose. 